You're still watching unsubbed, aren't you? Hey, subscribe, will ya? Hey guys, welcome back to another video in our uh, WordPress development series. Uh, last video, I went ahead and just showed you a little bit about get and post, and I was just giving you an idea of how we're going to be able to make some buttons to um, uh, manage our data as far as like when we want to import, when we want to export, blah, blah, blah. All right, well, today I'm going to do exactly uh, what I said in the last video, which is I want to actually, I realized I built most of this um, import code on just the general settings page, and I really want to put it on the import page. So to start, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take all of this uh, information here, up to right about here. We're just going to do a control X, head on over to our other page, and go ahead and paste it in there. And that's going to go ahead and put everything on our import call page. And then our settings page is now just going to be for our settings. And we can verify that by going back here, hitting settings. This page should now have nothing on it. It should be a blank. And our importer page should now contain our import code. And variable not set. If you watched the last video, you'll know why this is doing this. Perfect. So we've already able to make that happen. Okay. So now what I wanted to do today is I wanted to add some uh, bootstrap uh panels and forms and some some buttons to our settings page so i'm just going to go ahead and get started on that real quick uh so first things first remember when i talked about somebody notifying me a subscriber about something i did um back in here which is i enqueued a bootstrap script here in the uh, scripts and in the styles I did a, a site-wide bootstrap I'm gonna leave it like that in here but let's just say that on the callbacks page let's say that I hadn't done that and I just wanted it to exist on my callback not even my import page I just wanted it on the callbacks if I wanted to do that um, over here in the browser I went ahead and opened up uh, bootstrap this is just get bootstrap.com it's where you actually get the files for bootstrap now if I wanted to put it on that particular page I could have just hit the download button and I could have grabbed the uh, the cached version like this I could have grabbed this code right here and this JS code and I could have just pasted it right here and then it would only be available on this page but if, if you want to do it that way you can that's one way there are lots of ways so anyway but what we want to go is we want to go to the documentation and then we want to go to components and this here has all of the uh, components that you could be looking for inside of your bootstrap and so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna create a grid um, style two panel layout. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the grid. I want to have a form on the left. So let's go here. Oh yeah, see there's settings. I want to have a form on the left and a and a form on the right. And on the left, I want it to have all of our API key credentials and information. On the right, I want it to have information about our um, short code and about um, some variables a user can set for our short code. Like I want them to be able to determine how many videos you want it to output and maybe um, some styling information or something like that. We'll just make it pretty simple because like I told you guys, we are trying to build an actual usable um, YouTube uh, plugin here. So, okay, so we're gonna start by go ahead and getting creating a grid layout uh, in our bootstrap and then we're gonna do some alert boxes and then start adding some buttons. Okay, so back over here on uh, Bootstrap, um, you'll be able to find the grid under Layout, and then it's uh, right here under Grid. I'm just going to build this real time with you guys, so um, if this video is a little longer than 10 minutes, as always, I apologize. I'm trying to keep it as uh, short as possible. Okay, so as you can see right here, this is a uh, two of, we're going to go for a two of two layout, and so in order to get that, this is a container. This is how it's called. It wants the div container. It has the row, the first column and then the second, and then it, it actually tries to put it all together. So instead, I think what I'm gonna do is jump down here, and I'm gonna grab this one. So let's just copy this, head straight back to our code, and let's just place it, and then let's get rid of the second set of rows. Okay, and now we're looking at, let's go ahead and give us some space. Actually, that's probably okay. And then same thing here, let's give us some space. All right, so now we're working with a couple of different uh, uh, equal this is an actual uh, two grid layout so we're gonna have a grid on the left and a grid on and a, and a container on the right and for some reason inside I'm gonna give you a little tip inside of the WordPress dashboard sometimes when you're working with grid for some reason it has a tendency to push an item off the right uh, one of the two grid items and if you want it to stay in the screen one good thing you can do is just inline style it with a max width I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a max width of a uh, hundred percent and I know that that sounds funny because like shouldn't it already be a hundred percent but for some reason WordPress is weird about this in its dashboard so 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create an inner div inside of these and we're gonna grab some alert classes. So back in the bootstrap system, if we go to components again and we go to alerts, that's gonna show us these alert boxes and these are different alert color boxes. Let's make the one on the left yellow and the one on the right green. Let's just go ahead and do that. Why? I don't know, I'm just choosing to do that. So as you can see, there's the class that we need for our div. And um, if you're using Visual Studio Code like I am, you can actually go div and then I'm pretty sure you go dot and then you give it the class and then tab, no, no, no. You go, okay. So I know there's a way to put a class in as well, but I'm just, it's just, it's blank, I'm blanking out right now. So there we go. I mean, there's a shortcut uh, to do it with Emmet, but I just can't remember it for some reason at the moment. I think it, I thought it was div and then dot, but I don't, I don't know why. Uh, Oh, it was div and dot, but I was just pasting, and I don't think pasting works. So if I was to go div, dot, paste, and then tab. No, it doesn't work if you paste. That's why it wasn't working. Okay, so now we have a uh, alert warning box. In this case, we're just going to say, let's just say some stuff. Okay, and then in our second one, we're going to do the same exact thing. So we're just going to go dot div, and then to give ourselves a class. And then in the second one, let's go ahead and go for um, a success box. I'm just giving them different colors so you can see. So we have a nested div there. All right, and then we're gonna say some green box stuff. All right, let's go take a look at our settings page and it should already have a two grid layout at this point. Okay, so now we have a left grid and a right grid box. And if we wanted to give it a title, we could do that as well above here outside of the container. We could give the page uh, an H1 and actually I should be using Emmet. Okay. And we're just going to say general settings for WP10 YouTube test or whatever. Because I don't think I even gave this thing a formal name. And now we should have an H1 sitting above everything. Okay. And also, uh, I don't really like how close it is, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a couple of breaks. I could do this with margin as well, but I think that it will register the breaks. Okay. All right, and as I, like I said to you, the max width of 100, you see how it pulled it in from the right side, and so it gives us, it, we can actually see the full content of what we're dealing with, and they're equal size boxes. All right. So, like I said, on the left, I wanted to create our YouTube API key information. Now, where do we have that? Oh, that's right. We have it over here, right? I already had the field, the form, the method, the call-ins, everything. So, what we're actually going to do here is we're going to just take this straight from here, and also we don't even need this if is set variable and all that. Um, that was just to show you an example of how that works. We can actually pull that and we can pull this and then the page is back to normal. And we're gonna grab all this top stuff here. We're gonna put that in our warning box. All right, so if we go and we refresh this page, it's gonna have our API settings I showed you in the last video inside of our box. I don't really want the Jumbotron though. Um, the Jumbotron creates a yellow background and I think I just want these to be uh, in there on their own. So let's see, we have a container and we have a class which is uh, Jumbotron. This one here, I'm actually just gonna take that class away. I actually could just remove this entire div honestly because uh, we don't need it. And then we have an H1 and we have a form so it's gonna be this one here. All right, there we go. So now our YouTube API key and import information is now uh, contained within our page on the left side of our settings. Another thing is I'm considering actually one of these being an HR, which is a horizontal rule. Uh, BR tags is for breaks and HRs is for horizontal rules. You'll see what I mean in just a second. It's gonna put a line right here. Okay, perfect. That looks a lot better. And we're starting to have something that looks probably more like a plugin you've seen. So this is a functional API key importer. As you know, it's still pulling information, so this is working. And now we have a, it says use this section to import YouTube uh, API videos. We really don't want it to say that. We want it to say use this section to save your API key and video or, and channel ID for video imports. All right. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that. Uh, that's now fully functional and everything there is as we want it to be. And inside of our importer page, we won't have anything anymore because on our importer page, we're gonna have a top bar that has three runs and then it has uh, three buttons that are in a three grid layout. And button number one is import, number two is 
uh, update and number three is going to be delete so we can update or we can import new videos delete or renew our video list like update any new videos and then delete all the videos and just start fresh okay so this right side is going to be our um, short code it's going to be how we deal with our short code and uh, as you can see down in here we have a class display for that's an h1 that has a particular class that i actually want to use in the second one as well because it leaves it black and so i'm going to go ahead and move forward with that and uh sorry for it not being proper or you know kind of annoyingly not being all properly uh tabbed in as well that's kind of irritating me okay that's a little better it's a little more readable all right, so now, and I'm just doing this to show you guys real time what, what it looks like when we're updating it. If I'm doing a lot of back and forth, it's because I'm just trying to show you, okay, like we're actually doing this real time. So this side's going to be short code information and we're gonna actually create a short code for our video output. This is gonna be our short code information box, our short code information. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a form here uh, a submittable form that has the options for our short code and I'm going to show you guys how to grab that from bootstrap uh, you'd go to forms in your left sidebar and then this gives you lots of different bootstrap forms and uh, lots of different ways you can style your form and you can create inline and it's pretty cool and so and actually you can do a Google search as well and just search for um, form examples and you'll come up with tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of people's examples um, for a form but I think what I'm going to do is there's a place in here towards the top where it just has a, a form with like a bunch of controls on it, like this one here. Let's just take this code to start with and then we'll get rid of what we don't want. So let's paste this in here and let's go ahead and tab it in so it looks a little better. Um, okay, perfect. Now I don't want a uh, text area so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the text area. I don't want the multi-select, so we're going to get rid of the multi-select, and that's going to leave us with a drop-down and a uh, text box, and then we can go ahead and start creating off of those. So and another thing is if you want the submit button, you can go ahead and take that from a different one. There, like I said, this is kind of a cool place. I'm just showing you how to grab stuff off of um, their documentation and use it for what you want. So let's just grab button, which is a type submit. That's going to be what submits our form. And then if you're looking to change your button, you just simply go to buttons and it gives you all the examples of different buttons and types and sizes and all kinds of stuff. So like in this case, it's large button, primary button, button large. We can just take this class and drop it straight into our buttons class. And now we're using that button. And so we're going to say save short code changes. Okay. And now back over here on a refresh, we're going to have some information over here now. Okay. So it's starting to shape up and actually look like something. But now we want to determine, okay, we want the user to know what our short code is going to be called. And in this case, we're going to give them a standard short code. We're not going to let them create their own. So to do that, we can easily create an H2 here. And we can, once again, I should be using Emmet. Okay. And we show them, we'll say, to output videos simply use this short code and then we're going to say we're going to put it in quotes and we're going to say because you know actually if we um put the real short code in and then uh you uh wordpress tries to read it as the short code um it will actually try to display the videos here in this box in this h2 so we might have to escape this but we'll get to that when we get there. I'm just calling this WP10Y vids out. And then if we go back here, it should show right here. Simply use this short code, WP10Vids Y out. So now the user knows they can use this. And this isn't the prettiest way to do this. In fact, I really don't like that it's an H2. It seems way too big. Let's drop it down to a three. All right. That's, that's a little better. So mainly what I'm trying to point out to you guys here is that I'm not doing anything you couldn't do on your own just as easily. You could very easily go get everything from Bootstrap because everything I've shown you here in Grab, we built this from a Bootstrap form and then we just I showed you how to do it in the last um, video about how to save and capture um, options. That's in an earlier video and we're going to do that same thing right here. But uh, anyway, so that's that and now we kind of have a short code box but now we need to put a horizontal rule. Uh, I kind of want a horizontal rule right here, kind of like how this one is between the text and the bottom. And we can do that right after our H3 by just putting in a horizontal rule. 
and now it'll be it'll look a little better all right I'm pretty happy with that at the moment uh, and now we need to do a little bit of and I would probably make this button the same as this one as far as the size and everything but we need to now determine okay well what do we want them to be able to edit in the short code well we want them to start I want them to be able to edit um, the amount of videos that are being outputted and I want them to be able to pick a style or um, even put in a text area where they can put custom CSS. We could do that as well. But in this case, let's just give them like a couple different styles. And we can say style one, style two, style three. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to show you how to capture that variable in the front and then do something with it. Um, mostly, I'm just trying to keep it really simple. So we're going to create these two forms to say just that. So in the first form group, and we're going to have to copy um, these fields, settings fields, and all this information as well uh, down into here and do these same kind of get options and keys and all that. So let's get rid of these options. Let's get rid of these last two options. This is in our form group option. And also, as you notice, this is called, this is just form group is what the class is and all that. And uh, we'll get to how we set our options and all that again. But you can also go back and find that in an earlier video. For uh, the form drop down, let's call this. Uh, style type or let's call it Y vid style type I want it to be specific you don't want to cross your name types with anything else Y vid style type and uh, let's see I also need to give it the name Y vid style type and then we're gonna say uh, display type Okay, and that'll it'll be a little more uh, in here. We'll kind of like describe to the user. So we'll say um, image or like yeah, image left, and then we're gonna have image center, and then we're gonna have image right. Okay, that's gonna work out perfectly for what we're trying to do. And then in our form group, this is not going to be type email. It's going to be type text and we're going to say we don't want the placeholder as anything and actually this would really be a number select um, I'm kinda of going the wrong direction here by uh, not creating a number select for the user by giving them the option to type something in here because this is really for selecting how many videos they want so let's go back to our forms and let's grab a number select like, uh, I know we could do a drop down, but I'd really like to do a number select. All right, sorry, I had to um, just go ahead and find my number, um, my input number type, which is really just input type number. I told you I wanted to change this text box to a number select box so the user can select a number and then uh, versus typing anything. They can't type any text in it, but they can put numbers in it so they could display how many posts, and that's what we wanted to do. So in this one, we're going to say, Y post count and then Y post count. We're getting ready to end this video right after this, so. And then ID, we want to just, I'm just going to put Y post count and then I'm going to do the same thing with the name. And then the value, we're just going to start the value at one, but the user could do whatever they want. We're actually going to do this when we do the um, get option and all that. And then right here, we're just going to say number of videos to show. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to show you an example of us building our form. Um, in the next video, I'm probably going to, uh, and I probably want to align these. I don't like how they're misaligned. Just add some text above or um, margin them down. But anyway, um, that's going to conclude it for this video because I went ahead and moved it to the settings. So this is now our official settings. And then we're going to be able to go and create our importer page. In the next video, we're just going to continue with... Um, uh, actually making these uh, saveable options in a new f in their own form and then we're actually going to uh, register that short code and then uh, do a little bit of um, editing on our importer page by creating our three column uh, grid section our buttons and then actually maybe starting to loop through the posts and all that and kind of show you what the posts or what code looks like to delete and all that and we're going to use get variables for that so anyway um, like I said always in the beginning hey subscribe will ya and comment and like if you need any help comment and i'll try to help you out other than that i look forward to seeing you in the next part